Welcome to the Pacific Northwest. Welcome more specifically to Seattle. The Nemesphere is rocking tonight in the final game of the season and the final matchup on week 14. This is a big moment for Seattle fans. The Nemesis look to defend home turf and seal their playoff hopes. With a win, you're in. It's just that simple. But Portland is here and can play spoiler. Rochelle is here with me in the broadcast booth. I am your host, Alex West. And here in the broadcast booth, or in the stash truck, we have Damon Sim and Top Kiefer. Rochelle, what do you expect to see from Seattle tonight? Well, Seattle, in order to win tonight, will have to depend on type attack. I mean, he's number two in the league in attempts, number two in the league in completion. He has 16 touchdowns and 20 interceptions. So I think Seattle liver dies by type attack. And that's kind of been the story of their season. Seattle does get the towing toss and they will receive, so we'll see them take the ball. And it's one of those moments where we'll probably see right away what kind of night that Ty Patak is in for. Buckle up, folks. You don't have anywhere to be for, anywhere to be for two and a half hours as we get set for the kickoff and the last week of the season. Here we go. They'll bring it out of the end zone. That's across the 20, 25. A lot of white jerseys swarming to the football. And that's John Fullerton on the return. And let's introduce this Seattle offense. Quarterback, of course, Ty Patak. We mentioned him before. Halfbacks, Baloo Scott and J.W. Doyle. Fullback, Dean Jackson. In the receiving room, we have Kenny Slider Jr., Ryan Arlovsky, Gus Scott, and John Fullerton and Justice Blackwell. The rest to be introduced after this play. Weak eye formation. Running play, left side. That's Baloo, and she picks up about three yards on that first carry. Not a lot to complain about, but you think they're maybe just trying to take a little bit and set Ty up, not having to go for big stuff right away. You see the ball run on first down. It makes me feel better, and then I love these um, Seattle Unis tonight, for sure. Oh, yeah, gorgeous. Stylized gradient, power eye formation, but three wide receivers. Ty attack back. Throws right side, and that's off his receiver. Nothing doing there. Gus Scott unable to reel that one in. Third and seven. It's interesting. I mean, it'd be Go great ahead. for Portland to come up here with a, with a big stop here. I'm going to push Seattle to a three and out. For sure. You'd love to set an early precedent that this defense is not going to roll over. The rest of this receiving room, let's talk about them. The tight ends, Ben Harrison and Pauly Truth. Line is Will Stevens, Kobe Beef, Matty Mack, and Sean Sullivan. Patak back to throw. Got time. He's scrambling. Uh, and he's across for mid Whoa. Gutsy yep. move. And that's what Ty Patak can do. If he has nothing, he's willing to run the ball up the field. He does a very good job of doing that. And not only does he get the first down, with those wheels, he's able to keep away from the initial attempt to pursue from inside linebacker Mel Davis, who wasn't able to close that one out. Power eye again. Two receivers right side. Attack back to throw. The pocket is holding. He has time. Throws right side deep. And that's a huge first down. That is a completion to... Let's go over there. Check that out. Let's just see that replay real quick if we can. Because that's Gus a Scott. beautiful ball. Gus Scott, whoa, completely undefended. It looks like a zone coverage that just didn't account for the post route. Yeah, basically, type attack had all day. You're taking a nap back there, and you can't leave Gus Scott that wide open. Pick you apart with it, pick you apart with his eyes, or go get it with his feet if you cover downfield. Seattle's moving the ball with these. Split back formation. And they'll hand it off up the middle. One broken tackle, not able to shed the second one. That's a four yard gain for Baloo Scott. And she's more than happy to get those four yards. Just setting them up at this point. At this point, they're already within the leg distance, I think, of Victor Iron Leg. Not that you want to take a field goal. You'd love to put up six, but you're already here. Power eye, two tight ends, looks like. Only one receiver. Another run up the middle. 
and that is a huge rumble from J.W. Doyle. First time he touches the ball today. The former Florida Storm halfback is more than happy to just gallivant away. That's, I mean, our Seattle team's established from their run game here, which really impressed me tonight. Uh, what do you do, right? They've got Ty Patak who's happy to pick you off to the air, but if you can't stop the run, why would they do anything else? A little bit of motion, split back formation. John Fullerton going from left to right. Portland stacking the box. And Ty Patak is back to throw. Left side. That's a pitch out to Baloo Scott, who doesn't get much further the line of scrimmage. Great close out there by Portland's corners. Miss that coming from up from his cornerback position. I could, you know, make the play. Good pursuit, good tackle from the open field. Quick update on the other game that's happening right now. Into the first quarter, Mexico 7, Vancouver 10. Seattle looking to add scores of their own red zone. Pass right side. Patak first down. And that's a pitch in contact. What a grab and collection by Pauly Truth. And Ty Patak loves to throw the ball to Pauly. He middle of the field. Gets in front of his defender and perfect little pass by Patak. That's such a great little crossing pattern. You've got what you got the outside receiver going on a, that cutting across route, and you've got the tight end going in the opposite direction. They cross, but Tack has that moment where he sees it and he throws it to the tight end. First and goal. Jumbo set lots of men on the ground with their hands on the ground, running left side, and that is a broken tackle, and she's in! Balloon Scott will not be denied! Oh my gosh, I thought they had her, and she just pushed everybody off of her and broke through and got, got the touchdown. Wow. I think the defense thought they had her too because it looked like the pursuit stopped for a moment. Let's see this. The tackle coming in. They make the contact. Lots of blocks everywhere. No one in a gray jersey gave up and just cleared the road. Quick 6-0, first drive happening with ease. I mean, it's a lot of clock there too with nine plays, 74 yards at three and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. 74 yard drive. They ate up plenty of clock doing it on nine, play, on nine plays. And what's more, type attack is three for four. think that he's getting warmed up. Seattle kicks off. Portland has to answer back. Lots of pressure. They'll kneel down. Lots of eyes on Cyrus Jive. And let's talk about him and the rest of this Portland offense. Jive under center. Halfbacks Ezekiel Love and Scott Johnson. Fullback Jacob Farmer. In the receiving room, Israel Adams, Michael Knight, Ryan Davis, Terrell Cooper, and the tight end Nelson Lozano Jr. The line to come after this play. I formation, three wide receivers set, two on the right, one on the left. Seattle with three linemen. Snap, snap. Cyrus tried to throw, right side, one-handed grab, and an early entry, but Jacob Farmer showing me the nice hands catch brought to you by Retroid. Put a Retroid handheld in your hands and play the only video game with your player in it. SFL 4K23, that just off balance, one handed. And let's face it, fullbacks aren't known for their catching ability. No, that is not what uh, I would say the position is known for at all. Uh, let's talk about this next upcoming play. We've got another three wide receiver set, two backs in the backfield. Jive hands it off, right side running. Ezekiel Love breaks one tackle, but does not get the second one. That's only for one yard. Lots of Seattle jerseys swarming to the ball there. Yeah, if you're Portland, you have to be able to establish the CQ love. That's their bread and butter. For sure. And let's talk about the people that will be establishing that run. Tackles Jay Warren and Randy Fat the third. Guards Jacoby Wilson and Tyler Spencer. And the center, Jaden Taylor. Back to throw, jive, right side. And that's a timing route that the corner is able to disrupt. But, and that's just a simple inability to get where that ball was going because Daniel Valentine's just standing in the way.
Big third and nine. Single back. Trips left side. Lone wide receiver right. Drive under center. Back to pass. Seattle sending the heat. Throwing right side short of the sticks, and that's an incompletion anyway. Belus got not able to haul that one in. Lots of gray gradient jerseys around her. Fourth and yeah, nine. Yeah, I mean, they're only showing three down linemen, but they're, they're somehow getting pressure almost every play. Not, I think it's a little bit of maybe some creative blitz packages, but also those linemen, we'll get to them in a second, but they've been having themselves some years. Portland have punted away. Seattle's look like they're going to return it. Not a whole lot, but hey, it's not nothing, and he didn't put the ball on the ground. He said field position, their own 36. They've already marched and scored already. They don't have to get the whole field just to make it a two-score game at this point. All they have to do is get it past, get get it to about the third, get it get it to the other 30. It's doable. We'll see if they manage it. But for now, it's a weak it's a weak eye formation. Two wide receivers on the right side for Seattle. We will snap the ball. Left side running. And that is Baloo Scott getting a quick three yards. But let's talk about the other side of this football. Let's talk about the defensive squad for Portland. Introduce them. Defensive ends, Ricky Phillips and Robert Brawer. The tackle, Bubba Bruiser. Inside linebackers are Mil Lucas Gilbert and Mel Davis. Their outside comp components are Brody Gulch and Joseph Lama. The rest to come. Split backs for Seattle. And that's a delayed handoff to the fullback, who does get some, but not a whole lot. Do oh, no, that's J.W. Doyle, excuse me, who gets four yards there. It's the neck roll. <laughs> I know. I've never seen a halfback with a neck roll. <laughs> I'm just he saying. He's out there. He runs like it, though. He's, he brings that same energy just from the halfback position. Third and three, run up the middle, and they'll get it, and then some. Extra effort by Scott to just keep her legs churning and get, get a little bit more than just point of first contact. See, I don't think it's a very interesting thing there. I think that their running game is really surprising. Mm -hmm. It's something where they're kind of asserting themselves here. Bernard Smith, the free safety, just could not uh, complete that tackle without getting rolled over. I'm talking about Bernard Smith at safety, and the other safety is Leo Morris. Corners for the for the fleet are Chris Stash, Derek Majors, Ryan Cook, and Sidney Galloway. Look. Run play to the right side for JW, who makes who puts his head down, and puts his shoulder in, and go get some three yards and a cloud of dust. Another run play. I mean, okay. They are really showing us what we thought we knew. I think maybe it has something to do with the fact that Portland's been giving up 158 rushing yards a game so far this season. Seattle's more than happy to see if they can make that number higher. We'll run to the right side. Third and two. I mean, basically they're running straight up the, straight up the gut. Drag it defenders with them. Mm -hmm. They're getting lots of push. Come and stop it. See what you can do. They're just, it feels like they're waiting for Portland to start sacking the box, and then they're and then they're going to respond by starting to air it out. Third and two. Doyle in the backfield. Who will take it? Pushing against the line. Doesn't get anywhere. Well, that time, Portland came out in the 4-3 defense. The linebackers covered their holes. And it was a big stop. Bubba. The out of the punt. Bubba Bruiser able to get some, able to get past his blocker. Lots of uh, congested traffic lanes, and Bubba gets home to stop that one short of the marker. Seattle punting it away. Looks like it's going to the right sideline. Fair catch called for, but that's out of bounds. And that is going to be tough field position for the fleet. But if you're new to the Simulation Football League, welcome. The SFL is football for everyone. Get off the sideline and start your player today by joining our Discord server at simulationfl.net. Click the Join the Community button and begin your career or just to meet the stars of the F SFL on and off the field. It's never too late to get involved. As Jive drops back, throws right side, and that is not a completion. Unfortunately, looks like it bounced off the hands of his intended target. Plenty of great jerseys in the area to make that one difficult 
Yep, definitely um, well covered. Fender was right there. I mean, all over him, basically. Mm -hmm. This Seattle defense is chock full of some all-stars, especially the outside linebackers and, the, and in the pass coverage positions. Let's introduce them after this play. Second and 10. Jive, left side, who does get a completion there. And that is not spotted across the first down marker. They say wow. Terrell Cooper didn't make it. No challenge here. An interesting, an interesting spot, an interesting decision. They're going to accept it, but you got to think they're going to be pushing for a short run, and Seattle agrees. Lots of men in the box. Get ready for some big men action. Here we go. Oh, oh left side. Nice. Fumble oh, no. on the ground. Seattle has it. And there it goes. That's a return for Bernard Smith. Touchdown, a Raven. scoop six. Seattle up by two in the early goings. And that. That's the worst case scenario before this. You had the first down. You, you called a great play. You ran to the outside. The ball just came loose. And that's that's, 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 in, that's an incredible hit levied by, I think that was maybe Chris Stash, who actually, or not, excuse me, the, who was that? That was Amar Bryant Jr., I think, who actually lowered his shoulder to punch that ball out. Frosty just picked it up and ran to the end zone. Frosty did pick it up and run to the end zone. I was thinking I was going to have a moment to introduce the Seattle defense, but they didn't give me time. They just decided, let's score right quick. You're going to have a chance on the next drive. Amar Bryant forcing that one out. And the kick will be away. And at this point, Portland's already down by two scores, and you think they're starting to sweat bullets a little bit. I'm here, Portland, you have nothing to lose. You can play spoiler. You can play spoiler, but Seattle is definitely looking to defend home turf. They have no interest in making it easy for the fleet here. First and 10, power eye formation, two tight ends. Seattle more than happy to stack the box in response. Bringing the heat, jive right side, does get a completion there. And a first down. Portland actually getting across there. Israel Adams is just looked like he was in some space. It definitely made a great route. But there was just a little late hit there. Mm hmm. Looked like maybe it was a moment where Jai was able to take advantage of some zone coverage where he saw a gap where the linebacker wasn't there yet and the corner had sagged back just a little bit too much. Took advantage. I formation, first and 10. Three wide receivers set, one in motion. Michael Knight going from the top, from the bottom to the top of your screen. Jive back to pass, looking, has time, pocket stable, and he'll take the check down route to Terrell Cooper, who picks up five. Yeah, five yards on the first down, it's not a bad play. He's just giving, he's just taking what the defense is giving him right now. For sure, but at the same time, it's one of those things that I would like to see a little bit more of. He's been trying these 10, 12 yarders, and they haven't all been making uh, able to bring those in. Second and five, I formation again. Fullback in motion, switching over to the left a bit. Weak eye. And they will run it to the left there. They're making their blocks, but not enough. Third and three. Looks like maybe they were trying to get a little bit of push from Jacob Farmer, who just wasn't able to seal the end there. The block was made that the, um, the, the halfback went to the middle and said, bounce it off to the outside. But they had nowhere to go. Split back formation, third and three, two wide receivers. They're trying to get Terrell Cooper to operate alone on the right side. And they'll run it up the middle. Big push. Churning legs, but not enough. Some momentum there, but they weren't able to get past the steel wall. That is the interior defense. Surprised by that play, third and five, and you, you know, run the ball. Cooper was open too. Mm-hmm. Undefended them. And unfortunately, now they're gonna have to punt whenever they had a promising drive. Looked they like might have crossed midfield there, but instead, all for not fair catch. And that's right on the almost right on the twenty. Nice punt. 
Mm -hmm. Big long boomer. You can't say that Portland's that Portland's legs haven't been doing their job. Joey Rab, real quick, just for a sideline moment, the busiest kicker in in as far as the field goal goes, and he has been money all season. And that's a run up the middle from Seattle, who is My able God. to make one broken tackle. And that is a first and 10 off of just what seemed to be effortless. Yes. Where was the defense? Blue Scott breaks one, two, almost gets three. That's a tackle drill. And that's the end of your first quarter. Seattle up by two scores and building momentum. Quick moment to talk about other playoff scenarios that are happening in the SFL right now. We know, of course, Seattle, we've mentioned they're in with a win. But also, if they win, San Diego is eliminated. Patak operating on a single back. Three wide receivers run the left side. And oh Blue God. Scott away again. There she goes. Nice little juke move. Little shimmy. Let's see that right there. Whew. What can you say? At this point, I want to see a little bit more action from the defense and looking for ways to try and close out some of these run lanes to the left and right. They, the interior runs, Portland is doing okay stopping, but if those runs from the tackle and guard or outside the tackle, toss left side, J.W. Doyle is actually tackled for a loss here. One of the... Loss of the um of the game for Seattle and the towards her running game goes. I mean, Blue Scarry has fifty three yards. She is running with authority tonight. Doesn't feel all that dissimilar from a performance that we saw earlier the week. Canton's. Ugh. <laughs> yep, and there she goes. There she goes. Who is that right no, there? No, that wasn't. And that that's was Ryan Arlowski. Arlowski lining up in the backfield to get himself a touch. They're more than happy to rotate anyone into positions where they can succeed. Love to see them put Arlowski in the backfield and maybe call a pass equal to him. Split backs. Attack under center. Tossing. Right side run. And that is a one broken tackle, but J.W. Doyle not able to make a second one, and he is struggling with those outside runs. I feel like they want to let Baloo run the outside and let JW run the inside because he's just been tackled twice in a row now for a loss on those outside on side lane running plays. Fourth and five, Seattle's forced to punt it away. That time the free safety by North Smith, number 20, came up and got the wolf for a loss there. Punt is up. High, and they're going to let that one bounce into the end zone for a touchback. Let's talk for a moment about your upcoming about our upcoming other playoff games that we are looking at. One of the things that if Portland is able to turn it on here, there is something we've mentioned where Seattle can technically get bounced if they lose this game, and if Mexico City wins, and if Carolina wins on Monday and upsets the Florida Storm, Seattle will be out. But that's not looking too likely as so far Seattle is up by two scores. And Portland's offense is struggling to move the ball effectively. Lots of traffic on those crossing routes. Lots of gray jerseys in the area. That was very Second dangerous. Event. I feel like it's one of those things where it it was almost counterintuitive how it was not dangerous because no black helmets were turned his way because they're thinking, no, he's not going to throw it here. He's going to be looking somewhere else. Like, nope, right there. It bounced off a bunch of gray jerseys. Drive back to pass again, looking to the middle. Does get his man there. Michael Knight gets hit as he brings it in, but he keeps it close to his chest. Yeah, very tight window. Good pass by Cyrus Dive. That is one of the better passes I've seen him throw tonight, but oh, very tight what window. a hit from Bryant James, the strong safety there. Let's take a second. I'm going to introduce the Seattle Nemesis defense. They've got defensive ends. Connor O'Shaughnessy and Darko Young and James Ramos 
tackles Sean Parent and Aaron Steen. Jai will toss it to the left side, and that one is away. One shimmy, but not able to break loose is Johnson, who does still pick up six. Best run of the day, feels like. It's a very good pickup on first down. Anytime you're running back, you can get at least four yards. Mm -hmm. He's doing well. Mm -hmm. Feels like a little bit of spark of life, but let's see if Seattle responds. Linebackers are going to be Matthias, Citrion, Sabo, Sabo, Kanan, Aaron Gooden. Left side run wow. from Portland, who is able to pick up the first down. What is happening? They're getting it. Ezekiel Love is finding his rhythm after putting the ball on the ground early. He's just blanked that from his memory. Look at that. Nice little slip between. Picks up first. And Seattle had plenty of people in the box that time. He's did a great job by the O-line picking up all their blocks. Mm-hmm. The great, great push by the O-line and Zeke Love. I gave it to him again for finding that hole and running there. But for now, it's Scott Johnson in the backfield. Seattle showing pressure. First and ten. What will they do? Will they send it or is it fake? It's real. And that's Jive to the middle who finds his man, Terrell Cooper, who is across the first down marker. And that's the chance you take. You bring everybody on a, on a blitz and you leave receivers open. You ultimately do, but it's one of those things where you kind of have to, you know, you can't let them get comfortable back there. Sometimes you got to trust in your corners. Speaking of your corners, Amar Bryant Jr., Dan Valentine, and Ricky Robinson, and the free safety TJ Frosty, the strong safeties Doug Day and Bryant James, who I mentioned earlier. There's your Seattle defense. Jive under center, three wide receivers tossing left side and love makes one broken tackle not able to make two as it's just too much pursuit matthias citrion there more than happy to finish that tackle off definitely up by at least got one or two yards but i think that he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage <clears throat> if the if the if matthias isn't right there that goes for actual positive yardage but instead second and ten seattle stacking the box again drive back to throw pressure oh off the hands of Doug Day. That's one of those heart stopper moments. You got to be breathing very slowly if you're Sire Shive after that one and you're uh, you're doing a Hail Mary, you're kissing your rosary, something. Trips on the left side. One wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. Single back, Jive under center. Seattle showing plenty of coverage. Pressure coming. Left side, and that is short of the first down marker. Fourth and two, not able to pick up the sticks. Great play, just a little bit short. We felt the pressure a little bit and just got rid of the ball in a hurry. Hey, it's one of those, it felt like almost a timing route and there was definitely pressure coming off the weak side. Jive forced to make the throw he didn't want to yet. Joey Rabb is gonna try and make them on the board with this one. Kick is away, and he will have enough on that one. Right through the middle. And he is still perfect on the year. Now 20 for 20. The last couple of weeks, we have kickers missing field goals, so. We have seen a few, but not this time. You need a few more of those if you're going to even make it a one-score game. Though. Let's see Portland's offense uh, pick up a little bit more. Their defense has forced some stops. Will they force another? Kicking off to Seattle, who will kneel that one down in the back of the end zone. You think that they're in a position where they could either just run the ball a lot more and just eat up a bunch of clock or mix in the pass a little bit more, let call Patak's number just so his arm doesn't go cold, score fast, see if you can force another, another stop, and then just to widen the game even more. We'll see what they do. Split back formation. Two receivers right side. Portland showing pressure. That's a run left side. One broken tackle. Not two, though. Ballou is brought down in the backfield because there's just not a way for her to get off Chris Stash whenever she's busy stiff-arming one guy already. That was a great play by Portland defense. Finally, it brings Scott down. Mm -hmm. Finally, it takes two at least. Attack back to throw. Plenty of time. Throwing middle. Finds his man. And that's a whole lot of contact. There's a lot of white jerseys that were in the area, but Gus Scott is fearless. Look at that. One, two, three. Closing in. He does not care. He hears the footsteps behind. He knows there's a man in front, but 
I just love it when receivers go into no man's land and just come up with those kinds of catches and keep it close to the chest. It's textbook, it's elementary, but it's just a beautiful sight. Portland showing blitz off the left side. Attack, sending a man in motion. Three wide receivers, but I formation. Will they run or will they pass? Patak back to throw. Pressure left side. Oh, oh, oh no. Fullerton didn't have the ability to make what would have been another retroid nice hand catch of the game, but he made the extension. And then he got hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, looked like a really rough one, too. Portland more than happy to lower the shoulder here. I formation. Three wide receivers again for Patak. Portland showing nickel. And Patak rolls out right. Plenty of blocks. Finds his oh. man. Oh, short of the sticks. But he, I felt like that was a little bit dangerous. There was a linebacker standing right there. He just lofts it over his head. Yeah, they had a defender in the back of him and the defender in the front of them. And he just put the ball in the perfect place. Patak is finding these windows behind the linebackers, in front of the corners and safeties, and he's doing it with darts. He's doing it with these little floaters that feel like they're in a pickup game on the playground. He's doing it all right now. Why aren't they throwing it more? They'll throw it again. Well, there oh, he goes. take off. There he is. Oh, open field tackle and a dangerous moment. Derek Majors was there, but Jack gets up. He's okay. I don't like that stiff arm, though. <laughs> It's like, you're not a running back, dude. You're a quarterback. Slide. Just, just slide. slide. Just slide. Just just, just slide. You, you, so, you now you have to the defend their you know, two halfbacks and their fullback. You can't worry about type attack also. These things are running back, apparently. Mm -hmm. Who, by the way, is averaging, who's, by the way, averaging 12 and a half yards of carry. A tackle yeah. handed off. And that's one broken tackle. Love is putting her shoulder down and just drives through the defender. Bernard Smith, who gets rolled over once again. We've seen that before. She's got the power in those. She's got power in those calves. She's pushing. And she wants those extra yards. Second and one. And Baloo's diary has 62 yards, averaging 6.2 yards per carry. Not as mm. good as Patak is doing, but. And here we go. JW in the backfield. You gotta think it's a power run. Let's see. Up the middle. HP gut. And there he goes. Plenty of push and he's got the first and then some and that's what you do with jw doyle he's wearing the neck roll yeah he doesn't really do a great you know be on the outside but you put him up the middle he's a bruiser i just got one question what is gus, gus scott doing there at the fullback position he didn't even lay a block either case first down Two wide receivers and a weak eye. Portland showing plenty of men in the box, but it doesn't matter. Love is away. She finds her gap, and she gets six yards on that one. What a push from the Seattle front. And if I was Seattle at this point, it means Scott's having a great night. I just keep beating her the ball. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We'll see if they call another run. Lots of hands on the ground. Looks like goal line almost. Run left side. JW it does was. find the edge. Pushes through. Ooh, no. They give it to him? They do not. They say the ball was short even if his shoulder was there. Two minute warning. And Portland is in trouble already. Third and very short, practically inches, but they say it's a whole yard. Goal line formation. Portland not showing everyone, but stacking the box. Who will get the push up front? Run up the middle. Yep. Love has it. And she is in there, and it's, it, the blocking is immaculate. The lanes are wide open. She's not having any trouble finding space to get past the line of scrimmage and then some. Now Seattle's in the red zone. First and ten, but not quite first and goal. Two receivers. Looks like they'll send one in motion from right to left.
And that is nothing doing there. Tackled in the backfield is J.W. Doyle. Yep, yes, and J.W. Doyle up the middle. Up the middle. <laughs> it just happens, like, th there are some moments where he's getting pushed on some of those edge routes, but it's not like whenever Blue Scott's running. Toss left oh, wow. side, but yeah, finds Gus Scott, who's able to make it first and goal and extremely short. Patakians just keep composed in the pocket. Absolutely ruthless tonight with a killer instinct. Six, eight, six of eight for the evening. 75 yards so far. Not that they haven't called him that much, but they haven't need to. Not with how Baloo's been running. Trips, but they'll send one in motion from right to left. Portland stacking the line, stacking the box, looking for a run, looking to stop the run. Patak is back to throw. And that's a toss, left side, almost intercepted. Brady Gulch had his hands on it. The two-time All-Star was there, was grasping at it. When he realized he couldn't bring it in, he slapped it away, I love to see it. Awareness, you cannot let that one turn into a tip drill moment, and he did not. Second, and not even two yards to Tater. Seattle is showing plenty of run potential, but two receivers are there. Patak is throwing again. Pressure left side. And there it is! His first passing touchdown of the night. Extremely short, but he finds his man. And that is John Fullerton, who gets six. Yeah, I thought for sure this would be a run play. I think Portland did too. Nobody was cool on that one. And it's great misdirection, too. John Fullerton was almost completely undefended. One corner in the area, but he wasn't really looking that way. And now it's Seattle widening that gap to three scores. Extra point, Extra point is good. Portland is now down by 17. Only 59 seconds on the clock. Three timeouts to work with, so we know we're going to be calling a lot of Cyrus Jive's name here. Will he have an answer? What can he do in this do-or-die moment? You cannot let it just go down by 17 going into the half. Not with three timeouts. Not like this. Not if you want to have a chance at playing the spoiler. We'll go ahead and take the touchback. And let's throw it over to Cameron Irvine for a game update. Cam, what you got? Thank you, Alex. Well, Seattle can win the Pacific if Vancouver loses. So far, not so good for the nemesis. That pass caught by Nick Lockett. It is close, though. 17-10 Vancouver in the third. Back to you. Definitely a competitive game. Seattle's just hoping, just happy with what they're seeing here, though. Portland is struggling to move the ball so far. I formation, two wide receivers. Let's see what they've got for the first and ten. Back to throw his jive, throwing left side, and nope, not able to find Nelson Lozano Jr. Looked like he got hung up on the linebacker, but that's within the first five yards, so that's legal contact. Second and ten. Only three seconds off the clock there, and that's going to be critical if they're going to move the ball at all, is also managing that clock. Weak guy, three wide receivers, Seattle, showing a mix of coverages. That defense is moving an awful lot on their feet. They're all over the place. They're ready for anything. Ooh. Off the right side, and he gets home. Doug Day is just destroying at that safety position. Look at that. I mean, Ooh. he just came around that corner so fast and just was there. I just, uh, you know, maybe it's just a little bit of the strategy there. They're moving you this way. They're moving that way. You don't know where they're coming from until suddenly he's there. Third and 13, trips right side, one guy on the left, Cyrus Jive under center, third and long. He drops back, he has a little time, throws, finds his man, fourth and inches. Portland timeout. Ryan Davis not able to make it across and Portland accepting that spot of the ball. I think that's one of those things where it's a savvy call because you want to preserve your time. It's, oh, that was Seagal. Excuse my call, but Portland not going for it. They're going to punt it away. They'll concede it here. Seattle obviously more than happy to take over. Fair catch called for. 
smart move there. You don't want to put the ball on the ground after you just went all through that effort to make an actual stop here. We have but 22 seconds. Let's mm -hmm. hope. I, I see lots of passes here. It's either the pass. It. It's either the pass, or you do a quick handoff to Baloo Scott and just take it to the half. Either answer is correct. But you think they're going to pass since they actually burned that timeout, right? I would think. So. Oh, no, handoff. Scott breaks one tackle. Cool. Not two, though. She does stumble to the yard marker the first down but not across it Seattle more than happy to take it to the half here up by 17 and what else is there to say the run is working the pass is working they have a gluttony of options they have no wrong answers except a toss play to JW Doyle it seems and that will do it for your first half Seattle up by 17 defending the Nemesis, the Nemesphere with ease. Portland is struggling. In their final SFL game, they are not so far fulfilling the dream of playing spoiler. What are we seeing outside of the obvious? I mean, the fumble was a killer for Portland. I mean, that was almost, you know, big momentum change, definitely for Portland. And it's I think, you know, um, they're just struggling on offense. The run game is not established. Probably need that to make some halftime adjustments for sure. Absolutely couldn't agree more. Cyrus Jive is having a decent day overall. He hasn't thrown any interceptions yet. He's 8 of 14. But ultimately, the run game isn't there. And even when Cyrus is able to get some passes strung together, there's moments like a sack from Doug Day from an unblocked uh, strong side blitz because of some creative scheming. There's moments like a fumble, like a fumble, a forced fumble, uh, that lead to a defensive touchdown to widen things up. And Portland's got to adapt, and they've got to improvise a solution here. And I think it's going to have to be an even more hefty dose of Cyrus Jive having the night of his life. And we'll see if he gets off on the right foot here in the second half. Seattle kick off, and here we go for your second half. Portland happy to take it out here across the 20, but not much further. A stiff hit on Terrell Cooper, who gets up, but that's uh, that's just Blackwell there, who not looking like a wide receiver playing special teams like, there. Let's have everybody on special teams. I'm saying that Black Blackwell lowering his shoulder there, six foot three, two twenty, built like a built like a linebacker. Jive under center split backs on the 24-yard line. Two wide receivers. Running play, right side. Ezekiel Love is caught in the backfield, and that's just nowhere to go, nothing to do, because Aaron Gooden just beats the block and gets him in the backfield. Yeah, right now Ezekiel Love has six attempts, seven yards, 1.2 yards per carry. Oof. That's not sustainable, and that's the... That's what I would call the opposite of an established run game. Seattle is established. They're going to stop it. So Jive has to pass. Right side. Oh, intercepted. No. And that could be. Nope. A pursuit is there. And if it's not for Nelson Lozano Jr. there, who's able to make the tackle, Daniel Valentine would take that to the house. It's just getting worse for Portland at this point. Mm -hmm. It feels like with how they've struggled to run now at this point, Jive has been forced into action in the biggest of ways. And Seattle was looking at what they were doing. The plays they got beat on, they're taking notes. They are impro They are adapting. They are learning from what was beating them. And they're able to just secure an immediate end and incredible field position. They're inside the red zone. And the offense didn't even lift a finger. Inside the 16. Strong eye formation. Patak back to throw. Plenty of time. Takes the check down route. And one broken tackle from the fullback who doesn't break two, but that's already Dean Jackson, who is more than happy to just take that one. That's a look like the coverage downfield. Not a whole lot of options. Patak had time. Yeah, give me five yards on the play. I'm happy. 
four yards, sorry. Sure. It's it's one of those things where you just do four yards every time. You're getting a pay dirt eventually. Jumbo eye set only one receiver. Portland's stacking the box in response. And that's going to be a, Oh, wow. Nowhere to go. Baloo Scott is, right as she takes the ball, the defender arrives, completely unblocked. Brody Gulch, once again. Off that weak side, Brody Gulch just came screaming. That's a second tackle for a loss. Attack, back to throw, getting pressured. Finds opening, but does not find his man. It looks like Gus Scott was almost wide open in the end zone, but he's not able to set his feet and bring that one in. And that went from a short pass to a attack running about 15 yards back. I was like, where's it going? Throwing that one off of, off balance maybe a little bit, off across his body, just a tough throw to make. Tough catch. Instead, it's going to be a 33-yard field goal, and that one's right down the middle. 24-3. Seattle is up by three full touchdowns, and Portland struggling for answers. Cyrus Jive is about to go and have to just basically forget about the last drive, forget about the last pass that he threw, and just do a quick reset. What? You just had your halftime talk. What do you mean I threw a pass this, this half already? No, I didn't. He should settle down and forget it. You're right. But he's a better rank quarterback. He can do that. And that'll be a touchback. Terrell Cooper not interested in trying to do it whenever it's that deep into the end zone. So Portland will take over from their own 20. And there's 8.24 left here in the third quarter. Let's see if they are able to find some answers now. Eye formation, but three wide receivers set. I feel like it's going to be jive passing, but they're going to say they can run it if they want to. Seattle responding with the nickel. Jive back to pass. He has time. Oh, pressure getting there. And he finds a window. One-on-one -on -one coverage on the right side. And Israel Adams just rolls his body around to make that one. And that could definitely could have been a 50-50 block because the defender was right there with him. Not only that, but look at this defensive interior. That was collapsing. That was just almost a sack. And... It, it's hard to say other than maybe Daniel Valentine had his head turned a little bit. It looks like maybe he was trying to make a play on the ball there. Maybe not. But that time he gets beat. Three wide receivers again. Seattle showing blitz. They do. Left off the weak side. Jive has time and throws it. And that is an easy first down. He just is finding those soft spots still in no man's land. Where the safeties haven't closed out Michael Knight getting the first down there. And just, yeah, just right there. Nice rollout play there. You get away from all the pursuits and down time to find his receiver down the field, basically. The best time to call a rollout to the right is when they're blitzing from the left. And that is a lucky moment for Jive, who's gotten all, who had all kinds of time to deliver that one. Seattle showing blitz again, and they'll send it. Jive over the middle, who's oh, not able it. to. Lozano Jr., Popped again as the ball's arriving, and it's just a tough ass to say, yeah, no, I want you to catch that one while Bryant James has a full head of steam and is lowering his shoulder into you. Second and ten. Seattle playing a very physical brand of defense when they're not just outright snatching the ball out of the air. Jive forced into a two-wide receiver set. Rolling out to his left. Pressure. And he's finding his... Oh, no. the ball. And, it's, oh. and he scoops it up, and he's loose. Terrell Cooper with awareness, and it's the first touchdown for Portland of the night. What and in the world? What is this play? Kanan on the field. Sabo Kanan on the ground. A a pass completion that turns into a fumble that Terrell Cooper recovers and takes it for six. Portland will take it. That's like anything they can get, but there it is. It's a little crazy. I still have no words. <laughs> when you say you get, it's a lucky break, but hey, 
better some luck than no luck. Portland happy to just, uh, you know, it looks kind of scary. It's a four-yard, 79, four-play, 79-yard drive. Look at how little time it was. Just uh, nobody watched the replays. <laughs> the pass completion being to Lozano, recovered by Cooper. So Cooper with a 44-yard touchdown catch there. Okay. Is that how, that's how we're going to score that? That is, I think, the only way we can score that. It's certainly not a running play. <laughs> Seattle taking over after the touchback on their own 20. Now only up by 14. Small amount of pressure for them to answer back. So they'll go with a two wide receiver set, power eye otherwise. Attack back to throw. Looks over the middle. Oh! Intercepted! And Portland is in it! Portland is not dead yet. And that is just straight to Bernard Smith, who didn't even have to drop back. He just had to fall backwards and just let that one land right in his chest. Look at that. Oh. Wow. The attack really overthrew that receiver. Trying to find Pauly Truth on the streak route, who had his linebacker beat, but just sailed it. Now Portland's taking over with the best field position they've had all night. They're across midfield. Two wide receivers. We're seeing this formation a lot. Deja vu. Seattle stacking the box. Four men on the ground. Four linebackers. Run right side. Love with a spin move. Not able to get away. Second and seven. Portland is giving me some signs of life. I have hope that this game can get a little bit more competitive. Get kind of crazy. I love it when football gets weird. There's nothing like it. Three wide receivers, eye formation. Seattle sending the blitz. Run up the middle. Delayed handoff, but nowhere to go. Lots of traffic. Not enough running lanes for Scott Johnson, who just got hung up on the guard. Tackled. It's hard to say if that's a tackle for a loss or right at the line of scrimmage. Either way, third and seven. You know who it's going to be. Jive under center. Three wide receivers and trips on his left. One on the right. Single back. Attack back to throw. Pressure gets home. Too many blitzers. Aaron Gooden had no one in his way. Fourth and 11. And Portland's uh, just kind of playing with house money, but they bust out almost immediately. Um, the first two run plays kind of hurt that drive there. I mean, yeah, like you get the one good game. You get second. You, you go from first to, from first and ten to second and seven. Okay, we take three yards. That's fine. Then it's third and seven. No gain at all. Nothing. Nothing doing. That that's that's that just sucks the wind out of your sails. It's just not what you need. And I think they just tried to get a little too cute with it there. I don't like those delayed handoffs, especially if you just wait a moment. We could see up here on the broadcast booth that there were some linebacker and safeties creeping up there. Seattle was showing they were going to send the heat, and they did. And now, as a reward for that excellent defensive scheming, they've got the ball on the 20. I formation, three wide receivers. Portland also showing blitz. Run to the right side. And despite there being no running lanes, there's your difference between one rushing attack and the other. Baloo Scott gets three yards just by leaning on her tackle, just ch churning her legs and gets three. Yep, I, I, want, I want whatever she had for breakfast this morning because she's on fire. Eat your Wheaties, kiddos. Obligated to say we're not sponsored by Wheaties. J.W. Doyle in the backfield. <laughs> Run left side between the tackles. That's what I like to see. Lowers his shoulder. Third and inches. And that's I still, what, I still can't get past the neck roll on a running back. <laughs> I know. I, I just I live for it. It's 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 the kind of energy that just says, I don't care if you're trying to hit me, I'm the one that's hitting you. And he runs like a freight train. I love it. Look at a linebacker out there. Uh-huh. He sure does. State of Portland's linebackers are stacking the box. Four hands on the ground, third inches, run, and love has it. And wow. She's looked like she was going to be making some progress beyond there, but Bernard Smith 
just says no. I've had enough of you doing this, churning your legs and getting extra yards on me. Bounce backwards. Brick wall. First and ten. Seattle and I formation. Three wide receivers set. Run to the right side. Oh, Love is swallowed up by some excellent defensive second efforts. And that's just a Ryan Cook who had to be there. Come out and they're doing a better job of, of keeping Scott kind of contained. I mean, she's still getting some yards, but not the yards she was getting in the first half. Mm, it does look like some adjustments have been made by the defense as far as trying to clog the running lanes goes. Seattle more than happy to just run the ball the more. And looks like maybe Baloo got stuck on her on her line again there, but she got so many yards that it didn't matter. Third and one. Let's see if Portland can get a stop here. You think they want it. Seattle lining up in the goal line. They are more than happy to just try and get one yard. Run to JW. Left side. Who does get tackled? And they oh will God. say he got it. Extra effort needed, but they do get there in the end. And you can't help but think to yourself, well, you know, if maybe you do a little bit better job tackling and getting some getting some effective penetration on the left side there, the last play that that one yard wouldn't have been so easy to gain. I formation, but they've been struggling to stop the run all night, has Portland. And Seattle is happy to run some more. Three more yards and a cloud of dust. And the Most clock. importantly, Seattle's running clock. I mean. Exactly what I was about to say. You took the words right out of the mouth. Look at how much clock they're happy to eat. They're not snapping it right away. Power out formation. One wide receiver on the right side. Portland stacking the box. Looking for a run. And it is a run. Seattle still gets four yards off of it because JW is just a brick house. Rumbling up the middle. More than happy to take four yards, three yards. He'll take whatever you give him. But you think that when you see JW that you try to clog the interior lanes. With three people. <laughs> it's a bit tricky. But that's a run Wait. on the left side. Oh, wow. They get Brody a critical. Gold. He's there. Brody makes the stop. Fourth and inches. Seattle is not challenging that. Will they punt it away? It. I don't think she had it anyway, so. They will not. They are going to oh, go for going it, folks. For it. This is gutsy. I think it's the right kind of energy. You trust your run to get an inch. JW yep. gets it and then some. It's so hard to stop. What do you do? You've got to have a short, you got to force them into a short running play on first down and then another short running play on second down just to only say, oh, it's third and five, third and six. Patak is here now. What do you do? Portland and 4-3 showing blitz. Left side run for Baloo, who does find some room and gets four yards. And that'll be enough for a, four, for a first down if she keeps running like that. Portland's not able to get short, uh, to, is not able to consistently force Seattle into short yard into short running plays. Split back formation. JW up the middle, who does get contact but just keeps going. He's so hard to bring down with just one person. It means like Brody Gold about two or three yards that time. He sure did. Oh, just what do you do? Alright, I've gotta put you in I've gotta put you in the hot seat, man. What do you do? You're Portland you're now Portland's defensive coordinator. What do you do? I'd say you stack the box, but then they'll kill you with a pass. Split backs, three wide receivers, man in motion going to the left side. It's hard to say that you can do anything with stacking the box, but even when they've stacked the box, they've struggled. That's a rare moment where they've got two yards only on that first down. Blue Scott doing, looks like they had her going from left to right, but she tried to cut it back, but that puts her over the 100-yard mark. Definitely, and that's how Brady goes from the staff once again. He's all over the field. 
he's just not going to give up on any play today. Patak back to pass. Throws right side. Does find his man. That's a seven-yard gain to John Fullerton. Third and three, extremely manageable. If they get this first down, they're in the red zone. And even if they don't get this first down, uh, Mr. Ironleg is warming up on the on the sideline just in case. Here's your chance, Portland. They have three yards to go. And that is your third quarter, folks. Seattle is dominating at home. Let's throw it over for the league rights. The Simulation Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. Welcome back. Fourth quarter about to begin. Seattle with a very convertible third and three. But they're so close that a field goal is on the table too. Just don't turn the ball over and you're widening the gap. Portland stacking the box. Four men with hands on the ground. Lots of people at the line. Big cloud of dust. Big push. Seattle gets it. Baloo Scott will not be denied. Oh Running with it. I mean, this run game is getting out of hand. What can you do, right? You've got Baloo Scott with how many yards is how many yards is she at? Or yards per carry? 106. Averaging oh. 4.6 yards a carry. And that's the case. She can get a first down on every drive. Beautiful timing from the score bug, folks. Split back, three wide. Patak, the little tricky handoff. JW has it and gets five. Little bit of a creative play there. A little bit of where is it handing? Where am I handing it off? Where is it going? Oh, second and five. Portland is still struggling to stop the run, even in the short field. Even when they stack the box. What can you do? Showing pressure, and that's a run up the middle. Blue Scott has no problems oh getting the gosh. first and just dropped just shy of the touchdown marker. Chris Stash giving his all to protect the end zone. Seattle now with extremely easy potential for a touchdown on this upcoming first and goal. Look at that flop on number 64. Jesus. Oh. All up and down the line, you're seeing some excellent work by Seattle tonight. They are dominating at the line of scrimmage, I feel. What can you even take away from this if you're having to game plan against them, Ray? Like, what do you, what do, you do if you're if you're drawing Seattle round one? Well, attack. I mean, to me, Seattle, I think it's attack. Whoa! What a play by Stock. For Stock with a big, big interception in the end zone. I was so certain they were going to run it that I asked you a question, but I shouldn't have even blinked because Chris Stash is there! It's a it's a rollout to the left. Patak trying to catch Portland sleeping, but they caught me sleeping, but not Portland. Taking over on the 20 yard line is Cyrus Jive under center. Weak eye, two receivers. Portland refusing to say die. And yeah, they're still hanging in here. Oh, what's Florida left? Rolling out left side is Jive. Has time. Finds his man. Even with the contact, Israel Adams is more than happy to get the first down there. Home crowd a little bit stunned at the tournament events, and I would be too. You think, you, do, you know, what do you think? I think that was a perfect route by Adams. It's a great route for sure. Finding some, uh, Cyrus Jive is still locked in. I thought they caught, they caught, they kind of caught Seattle in his own defense, which you know, perfect route. Mhm. Mm First and ten, lots of hands on the ground. Seattle stacking the box, showing blitz is coming. Fullback handoff. Second and seven. After the after the run for Jacob Farmer. A little bit of Portland trying to get trying to make sure to keep the defense honest. I don't mind it. And that was actually Jacob Farmer's first um, run of the night. Sure was. Second and seven. Under center's jive with the I formation. Three run receivers. Drops back to pass. Looking. Has wow, time. Day. Left side. Israel's not able to bring that one in. And there's gray jerseys everywhere. Lucky that one wasn't picked off too. It was a risky throw. It would have been his second of the day. And that would have been an absolute liver. 
punch. Not just a gut punch, but one that makes you just two seconds later, you just keel over. Third and seven, bunch right side, single back. Jive is looking at a lots of pass coverage from Seattle. He has time, but the blitz is coming. And that is a first down. I think it's the best offensive drive I've seen from Portland tonight. Right, they were backed up. Good job of moving the ball. They were backed up. They started this drive on their own 20. And with that completion, they have moved the ball past midfield all on their own. And two receivers just sitting right there in the same spot. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Double trouble. Looks like it could have. Looks like they could have been stopped. But that's four men with their hands on the ground, shifting to the left for Seattle. That side jive finds a wide open and practically undefended Terrell Cooper. No one at the line of scrimmage. No one covering the short routes, and that's just easy. Well, yeah. I mean, the number twenty-four was setting back. Everybody else was on the freaking line. It's like, oh my gosh, I thought they were gonna bring in the house, and and they did. Jive found a way to punish a quick, uh, cheeky blitz from Seattle. Again. These look like they're doing it again. Two in the backfield, two wide receivers. The backs are next to each other. And that's a run left side or to the right side. Yeah. One broken tackle. Ooh. Love is moving, keeping his legs churning. Six yards. And that was all love. I thought they had him dead to right. I mean, they had maybe eight people on that line just now. There's, you don't see that many people that close to the line of scrimmage on the defense and think, oh, yeah, that's going to be a six-yard gain on the, on the ground. Love putting it, putting it in some extra effort there. I formation, three wide receivers. Jive delayed handoff to Johnson, who put the no. ball on the ground, and that's scooped up. Seattle has the ball again. What? What happened? I blinked. He put the ball I on the ground. The ball just bounced out and went right into the defender's hand. Poof. It just looks like it was Doug Day who popped that one out, perhaps. Not certain, but Bryant James scoops it up. And the most promising drive for Portland's offense so far tonight snuffed out just like that. No consistency in what you can see in this fourth quarter. Both offenses have been swinging wildly. Rush to the right side for Love. Toss play, who does break one tackle. And she's going for more. Eight-yard rush with authority. And Scott is having herself a night and a half. If I was Seattle from this point on, I would not put the ball in the air. I just give it. I just keep it in blue. Let her do her thing. You know, I think I agree with you there. Patak hasn't had a bad night, but he has actually, when you look at the stat, he doesn't feel like he's had a bad night, but he's had two interceptions. And he is not having uh, what we would say his best night so far this season. Under 100 yards. Split back, second and two. Hand off the middle. JW is more than happy, oh and he's God. away. He almost broke that one loose, but... Derek Majors makes the tackle from behind in the open field on the big man and saves what could have been even more yardage. Instead, it's just a modest game. 11 yards is not that modest for a run. You're not wrong. It is a very, it is pretty sizable, but that felt like it could have gone for 20. Eye formation again. Three wide receivers, nickel formation for Portland, showing you some blitz. And that's a run to the right side. Baloo oh, breaks one tackle. Breaks another one at the ankles. And she's away. And she's forced out at looks like the 30. And she just was, she is just not going to be brought down by one person. It's she refuses. I love the little dance down the sideline. Make sure she stayed in bounds. Mm hmm. And we can see it right there. Tiptoe, tiptoe. But that, that yep, shoestring tackle effort. Too. Ooh. So what's the, what's this challenge about here? Out of bounds. Okay, well, let's take a retroactive look at the play presented by Retroid. Get your SFL console at goretroid.com. See where they say that one happened. How many yards does that save you? Right there. Oh. Challenging exactly where it is because her left foot maybe 
about was on the line, back, but that, I think. that right foot for sure was out, but that left foot looked like it hit it. Yep. And critically, if Portland wants any chance of a comeback, they do need to keep that last time out. So I do think that it's ultimately uh, a bit of a challenge where it's, you know, it's not saving you a whole lot, but it could save you from giving up seven points and only making it three if your defense can get a stop here. Patak under center. Strong eye formation showing. Three wide receivers set. Portland in the nickel. Showing some blitz off the right side, and they will go. Blues running straight into it. Nice stop. Now you're second and 12. You're, they're out of field goal range. This, is a, this could be an important third down, second down here. And the original spot of the ball was the 32-yard line. They scooched it back to the 35. After that negative two-yard rush, now it's at 37. That's starting to get out of field goal range. Patak is now looking at only one receiver. Uh, back in the field, three wide receivers, and he will pass, rolling out to the right. Pressure coming. He throws it, and he gets a wow. one-handed grab. Is that... It was Polly Truth, his favorite retarded. Polly Truth with the one-handed in contact. And that's a first down for Seattle. Well covered, too. Nothing you can do about that. The perfect throw. Some white jerseys were definitely in the area. Looked like some man coverage, but Patak was able to piece it apart. Now he's working with first and 10 inside the red zone. Looks like goal line. Portland responding with a 4-3. Man in motion. Delaying, eating clock, winding the play clock down as far as it will go. Looking to end this game as soon as they can. Run up the middle. Blue's stuck on line. And she goes nowhere. Good defense Set. by Portland. Mm-hmm. Exactly what you want to see. Even if you're not lining up a whole bunch of people in the line, you want to see your corners and your safeties flow to where the ball is. You want to see the front four and the linebackers clog these running lanes. It's what they've been needing to do all game, and they're showing it up now. But is it too little too late? It feels like it might be. More than happy to eat clock as Seattle op operating out of the goal line again. Portland showing pressure in the 3-4. But the safeties are back. Run to the right side. Baloo is going to get some yardage. She's going to get oh. more. It just feels like a body blow after body blow. Baloo is just relentless. It's I'm like just, he just hits up, she hits a defender and just kind of bounces off of him and just keeps plowing down the field. I'm just dumbfounded, Ray. I really am. So in lieu of that, just for a moment, because at this point, Seattle looks to have their playoff spot locked up. The wild card round of the SFL playoffs of season 22 kicks off with double headers on Saturday and Sunday, April 20th and 21st, starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss any action in the SFL playoffs right here on SFL YouTube. Who will make an impact when it matters most? Third and one. Goal line, run up the middle. JW is the call, and he does get the first. He barely got that first. And it wasn't without effort. How many white jerseys did you see swarming to the football there? Yeah, Frosty was there. I made the hit just a little bit. And it feels like a, just a little bit too little, a little too late as Seattle is going to more than happy to wind the clock down. They're going to see one play before the two-minute warning. And looks like it'll be another run, split back formation. Portland happy to stack the box here, but a couple of safeties in the, in the end zone just in case. Hand off up the middle, and Love is uncontested as she just gallops forward. All, it looks like that was seven or eight yards. Well, Luz got there with a little, great little spin move. She's just unstoppable right now. She broke one tackle, and if it wasn't for 92 right there, she would have had pay dirt, but that's the two-minute warning, and Seattle is one yard away. Right. 
and now it's just time for some big back activity. Lots of lots of hands down on the ground. Let's see who gets the push on this first and goal. Love finds a way, and she squeaks through outside on the tight ends to score and make it a 20 point after this extra point, a 21 point game. And what a night she's had. That's a good power football right here by Seattle. Ground and pound. What else can you say outside of just that their front line and their tight ends have just done the most on blocking all night long? There's just no other way to say it. It's incredible to see how much push they've gotten against the Portland, whether Portland's stacked the box, whether they've played back a little bit and allowed some reads, tried to make it more linebacker safety focused, it hasn't mattered. Seattle's moved the ball at will all night, and that's a 10 play, 74 yard drive that eats up over four minutes of time to put the nail in the coffin. What could Portland have done better? What do you the think, Larry? I mean, outside of the run, like they struggled there, but what, what I would think you... they had a lot of bad luck. I mean, the two fumbles just killed them. Mm -hmm. It's true. They did have the ball bounce. Uh, they did have some good luck moments, some good intercept, some uh, big impact plays, but they also had some that go that went the other way. Seattle's defense definitely didn't look to make it easy on them, even with how the offense just was falling out, frankly. And Portland never did establish their run game, which I think you know, they live and die by that. And I think they just died by it tonight. That's so true. Jive now under two minutes. Bunch right, single back, drops back. Pressure coming. Takes the check down route to the left side. Love does get eight yards, but st is stopped inbound. So that'll be a timeout. I think it's kind of early to be using timeouts, but... It's under two minutes, so you don't have a two-minute warning. The only other option, though, would be to run the hurry up or spike the ball. Here they elect the timeout. We'll see if they regret that down the stretch. Two wide receivers, two backs, drive back to pass. Pressure left side. He's hit as he throws. And that one wobbled through the air. And with that, we'll have a game update. Let me throw you over to Cameron Irvine. Cam, what do we got? Alex, final play of the game. Mexico City needed a touchdown to win with six seconds to go. Jordan Sipe is sacked. And Vancouver holds on to win 23-17. Mexico City is out. Back to you. And with that, Seattle was already pretty much guaranteed to win this game. But that just sealed up any chance of them even being bounced out, even with Portland getting any kind of miracle. Not that it looks like they're getting one, because Davis not able to find the sideline. The clocks kept running. Portland's forced into using their second timeout. Only one left. If you're Portland here, you, you got to score, make yourself feel better about the night. You've got to get at least one more just for honor. Just for honors. Three wide right receivers at the top of your screen. Single back. Up oh, one will go in motion. Two and two, left and right. Sink and jive under center. Seattle happy to play back. Jive has time, but not a lot. He throws, overthrows. That rush was coming. He was forced into throwing that one a little earlier than he wanted to. The only positive thing that play was it did stop the clock. And he did throw an interception. That's true. Two things that did not happen. Uh, the clock did not keep running and he did not turn it over. Bunch writes the bunch at the bottom of your screen. Drive in the single back again. Portland is in trouble. Jive back to throw. Takes the underneath, but not able to complete the check down. That was just all kinds of great jerseys everywhere in the vicinity. No options. It's just definitely a four down territory for Portland, so. At this point, there's nothing there's nothing left except to just go for it, right? On midfield. Four wide receivers, single back. Seattle with three defensive linemen showing one linebacker blitz, showing lots of coverage otherwise. Jive back to pass. Pressure is not there, and he finds his man downfield. 
and he will take a timeout. Ryan Arlovsky there, practically undefended. I mean, they're, they, they cost him a bill, they're in field goal range, they have, you know, no timeouts left, but they're still playing time on the clock to score a touchdown here. Excuse me, that was Michael Knight making the reception there for the first down. But that's Portland's last timeout. Israel Adams going in motion left side of your to the top of your screen. Seattle with all kinds of coverage on that top side. Pressure coming, but Jive has time. Takes the underneath route and does hit Israel Adams. The hurry up is here. Second and four. Jive again. Has time. Left side. Does not find his man. Terrell Cooper in traffic. Does get hit. The former Aztec not able to... to or the, the wide receiver not able to secure that one. Third and four, clock is stopped. Even though it's four down, you'd love to see a first down here. You don't want to have to try and get fourth in anything if you can avoid it. Drive looking. Throws left side. Oh. Off the hands. And Seattle secondary has just been all over these receivers all night long. For sure, and they've laid some heavy hits. It almost like you think he heard the footsteps and he's having flashbacks. Drive under center for what could be the his last play of the night. Rolling to his right. Looks, throws that way, and that is incomplete. And Seattle will take over with the turnover on downs. And that will be your ball game. More than happy to just kneel down and just finish this one off. And like I said, the secondary has been tough. They've been all over the receivers. I mean, look at that. Valentine. Danny Valentine. And he's, been, and he's been showing up tonight, too, with that interception earlier, laying an absolutely brutal hit there to deny the first down uh, conversion and just put an end and really the final nail in the coffin. And with that, you can hear, you can hear the buzz. You can hear the excitement of the crowd as they are waiting for this final whistle. They must have definitely seen the final score of the MXC Vancouver game. They're more than happy to see their home, their home team secure win number seven and put a stamp on another winning season for this team who, by the way, they are only in their fourth full SFL season and they are posting uh, their second winning season now with this win. And that'll do it. But as we let the clock wind down, I'll remind you all about the 2024 SFL Convention, which is headed to South Shore Harbor Resort in League City, Texas, just south of Houston, on July 12th to the 14th. It features live games, flag football, a golf tournament, tailgate, pool party, and more. For all the convention details, visit simulationfl.net slash news slash convention to reserve your room, see the event schedule, and more. And the clock strikes zero. What a game by Seattle. Dominant from bell to bell. And definitely, I mean, Portland never to give up. They, they tried to stay into this game. They had a couple of you know things not go their way. Truly just a night where nothing really could get going. The drives that the one time they got a lucky break was that was that long pass that turned into a fumble that they scooped for the score, but outside of that, they just couldn't get anything done. In either case, thank you all for watching and thank you all for coming out tonight. Tune in next week and Seattle will be there. The playoffs are next.